hello friend. <laughs> hello, it's Maxine. <laughs> Today I'm, well for starters, sitting in beautiful Sydney, BC on Vancouver Island and I usually add a little video of what I'm looking at right before I do my spiel of talking. <laughs> It's just beautiful out, the weather's beautiful, the water's pretty calm. So today I wanted to do another Jubilee Media video. Um, I forgot to I forgot to look back to see if it was um, Jubilee Media or Jubilee Spectrum or it's kind of like the same thing, but I don't know why they give them different names. Like there's Jubilee um, Middle Ground and other ones. But anyway, um, so the group discussion this time was people with disabilities share their deepest secrets. Another thing I'm going to try to do today is look... <laughs> A seagull was chasing a crow with like a tomato in its mouth. <laughs> um, oh yeah, okay, I'm ADHD as well. Um, I'm going to try to look at the camera today and not just myself and the reflection. <laughs> um, I guess that's like when you look up, it's like, oh, there's a person there. Oh, it's me. So it's, it's hard to like look at where the camera is, but um, I'll try. It's pretty bright out, but um, anyway, so people with disabilities share their deepest secrets and what it was is a group of people sharing their secrets and then if other disabled people could relate to that, they would stand behind them and then they would kind of share a little bit about themselves as well. And I just thought it was another great video with like an awesome discussion that you know is also extremely I'm pretty sure I cry at all these videos <laughs> I can't remember now but I'm a big crier I cry at like you know emotional movies and music and weddings and I cry at happy times and sad times I cry at TikToks of people sharing things like you know when family come back from the military they haven't seen in a long time and when dogs are re I'm gonna cry thinking about it oh my god <laughs> but um the first one is I am afraid to live alone so in my 35 years of existence um besides living with my family I did have some roommates I've never lived with a partner like a boyfriend but um I think that I'm more so these days afraid to live with others versus live alone and that's why I've been alone most especially when I've um you know lived alone by choice not like financial reasons so and I think just all the experiences that I've had have made me like really fearful of, you know, it's like, I'm just at this point in my life where I just am worried a little bit about my thinking and being so kind of at peace with myself and everything. It's like, I'm really worried about getting into a relationship and, you know, ha just those everyday ordinary arguments that people have. It's just like, I feel like I want to avoid it at all costs. And I don't like, I'm just worried about living with someone where it's like they portrayed their self one way. And then once you live together, it, whatever, um, you're just completely incompatible living together. And and being in a vulnerable position at that point like if you're already kind of like living in poverty and then you rearrange your whole life to I'm just like always thinking about the future always thinking about the past and I need to be spending more time just being in the present moment and not worrying so much but when you have CPTSD it 
and anxiety and stuff and past experiences that makes you fearful. Like I've had bad roommate experiences where one person brought in bed bugs, one person like left the front door to our apartment wide open like onto the street and I was worried that my cats were gonna get out and um and you know just um living growing up in an abusive environment that for sure has been the main contributor <laughs> and um So, I, yeah, I'm not really afraid to live alone. I don't feel like I really live alone. I have my two dogs, my two cats, my dog. If I just live straight up alone and I didn't have my dog, who's one of them is more carefree and the other one's extremely protective. If I didn't live with my dog that was super protective, I might be pretty afraid because I've had other experiences like living alone this was like more in my prime, like when I looked my best, I was active at work, I was young and like dating at the time and meeting new people and still going out and partying and whatever. Um, I, there was a time where like, I had really bad experiences, but I'll say one that was like less bad was I was at home, like pretty much half dressed on the couch, like, you know, and I, all of a sudden my cats were like looking at the door of my apartment and they're making like that noise that they make when they see like bugs and birds and stuff. And all of a sudden I notice, I look up in the peephole, something was like happening with it. Like I saw movement. So I quickly went to my bedroom to change. And when I came out, I heard somebody like the emergency stairwell was right next to my apartment door and somebody slammed the door and was running down the stairs. So I, that was like kind of around the time I realized I like have a stalker or something. So, um, I, I'm pretty sure that got the wheels turning and it made me move around that time. So, and honestly, like I have a lot of stories. I actually made a video about um, I think I changed the title of it, but it's about all women and girls are survivors and it's because we've all like, people think women are being like prejudiced or being dis like discriminating when we talk about fearing men and choosing the bear over a man or something, but it's like, like please go watch I'll take I'll put the link to that other video in my comments because it's um like just one person like just my experience and I'm not like the most good looking girl I'm not like attractive by society standards being fat and not having like traditional beauty not having any cosmetic work done, having an ugly nose, whatever. Um, like, it doesn't matter really what you look like. Like, all of us have gone through harassment, whether it be sexual, stalking, threats of violence, and a lot more common than you really think. So, um... This is going to be another very long video because it's like eight minutes in and I'm only on the first question. But the next is, my disability is hard to maintain any kind of job. So I put yes and uh, like, okay, so any kind of job. Well, yes, I have like the longest job I've ever had was when I was self-employed for four years with my home daycare and that's something I really wish I could still do to this day so is it hard to maintain a job with or maintain a job or is it hard to maintain a job with my disability like any kind of job yes and no I mean being self-employed you don't have somebody you know calling the shots and bullying or and it's all up to you and so there's certain that's why today I'm like very selective in what I do like I've done 
since finding out about my disabilities and that like before I used to kind of try a variety of things that were really bad for my mental health especially due to with my disabilities at the time when I got diagnosed or was getting tested for fibromyalgia I had to drop out of college for massage therapy which I passed everything but I did really bad at anatomy because it was very heavy duty and I hadn't been in school for a really long time and I also had to try to work almost practically full time while I was in school so that was the only thing I really struggled with and had to redo but some people had to redo um, physiology and I passed that somehow <laughs> but <laughs> anyway um what was I even saying just um yeah so some like both my disabilities so mental and fibromyalgia which I still I haven't seen a doctor in a really long time and I'd like to get a second opinion with a neurologist and a rheumatologist because um I just feel like I wasn't hurt in the past I was a lot younger when all this had gone on and you know how doctors are when you're young and you're a woman you blame it on your weight or your period or this and that and um but now I kind of think it's more so EDS and I've made other videos mentioning this but just one small example is like very stretchy skin at a young age and not even due to weight loss this is like before and my knees hyperextending and things like that but um so that's like something I'd like to find out about because I don't think I've ever had any proper testing with like a genealogy or um genealogists or I don't know if that's the right word but it like I'd be nice to know more because sometimes I think I'm really avoiding some bigger issues like I have peach fuzz on my face my periods have kind of started to become more irregular um the like this portion of my eyebrow if the outer corner of your eyebrow doesn't grow like I always blamed it on over plucking when I was in the 90s but a lot of people did and their eyebrows grew back and mine could be a hormonal problem so it could be like Hashimoto's or something I do have some of the signs of that but like when I first got diagnosed with fibromyalgia I kind of just thought okay well that's what it is and then um even though it always felt like a default diagnosis and then uh, when I got diagnosed with like autism, ADHD, CPTSD and that I kind of left it alone at that for a while because it's like I literally have a lot of diagnoses and it's not like all in my head and it's not a joke like I shouldn't be laughing but it's like um <laughs> It's a lot, and um, but I know I'm not alone there. <coughs> so, so yes, I have to be selective with what I choose. Um, it does make me worried long term in the future, but I that's why I've picked careers where I work more so independently, and so that hopefully it works out for me long in the long term because I worked in environments where you're in very close proximity with others you know five days a week eight hours a day or more and those type of jobs don't work for me because there always seems to be this like high school bullying mentality where people pick on you and this is before I knew I was autistic but they always singled me out like at every job I've had practically some people make me feel welcome and like there's just some people who were good people it wasn't like every single one of them but it just seems to be the case that all like in everyday life or when you're watching comedy shows and stuff it's like there's always somebody who's ruled out and that tends to be the neurodivergent person so, um, next is, sometimes I wish the accident that disabled me ended my life. Well, I really hope others don't feel this way, and I'm sure, like, 
there wasn't necessarily like an accident in my um beyond birth I never really shared my birth story and it does kind of make me wonder if others have um like there has to be a cause for everything and I'm not saying that anyone deserves to feel guilt or shame over it or that this is a hundred percent the case but at my birth story is I think my mom was um in labor for like 24 hours or something like that and at the very end when I she always made to mention that when I was when I finally was out that well I was jaundiced for one which is kind of common in kids but she says like my eyes rolled back in my head and then they re wheeled me out of the room and that's all I know about that so it kind of makes me wonder well did I die technically at birth like that's something I kind of would like to find out because it's like well if I went without oxygen for a time being then is that and I was also pulled out with forceps so that can cause brain damage um not saying that all autism is caused by brain damage because we don't I don't know if we know that for sure but um Like, say, for example, like, let's just say it is caused by trauma at birth. Well, you know how some people are geniuses. Maybe a part of their brain got damaged enough that they, the, the type that can hyper-focus on information, so, like, they become, like, geniuses. That's kind of, like, what I wonder sometimes. So, I don't know if there's any truth to that or if this has already been discussed, but... Like, um, autism is not a learning disability necessarily, but a lot of autistic people do have learning disabilities. Um, but anyway, it's just something I wonder about, but, um, I don't think I would, like, I guess when I was younger and I was living in the in abusive environment as a kid, then I probably had wished at times that I had just died at birth because I did almost or <laughs> I don't know um but when I was like young and depressed and I had my first and only real suicide attempt and I had a lot of suicidal ideations after that point until I officially got help in my late 20s um but, so, I guess I can relate to that. Um, so next is, sometimes I play up my disability to get fast passes at theme parks. And I put, no, I have not taken advantage of anything due to my disability yet. I haven't, um... You know, I have fibromyalgia, but because I've managed it so well these days, and believe me, like, I still have it, even though I've been managing, I've been managing it well by being very inactive, unfortunately. When I get really active, then it's like I'm back to feeling that pain or wake, you know, and if I'm not eating right either, I wake up feeling in that extreme haze and days where it feels like if you get up, you're about to croak, like really bad um but you know I don't feel like I'm gonna take advantage of those things until there comes a time where I like truly need it like I, every disability is a spectrum as well like there's lots of people with fibromyalgia there's lots of people who are autistic but you know until my diagnosis gets to the point where I'm like almost wheelchair bound and I'm not gonna be using any of those things and no shame to anyone who does I mean life as a disabled person is incredibly difficult so if there's something that can make your life a little bit uh, more enjoyable and make things a little easier then 
that's fine. Um, next is my disability makes me feel like I'm undeserving of love. I put no, but things I faced make me not want to try anymore. Um, in the past, definitely, I have felt like that. But I feel like these days, I feel like I am deserving of love, and I feel like every dis disabled person is deserving of love, but I think it's other people that make us feel like we're not deserving by... And I don't even just mean like intimate, like relationship love. I mean like love just from one human to another. Like the way that disabled we get treated in everyday life is just really horrible. And just, and it's just like amazing that um, the cycle of life continues where the bullies have children and they're going to influence them, them to be that way and the cycle goes on. But Hopefully it's the pattern where it's like one parent's this way, the child is opposite, and then unfortunately the second, and then their child will be kind of like the opposite of them. But, um, I wish I didn't feel like that. It's really hard sometimes when not only are you disabled, but I have CPTSD from childhood trauma. I've definitely felt unlovable by the actions of others, like including my own parents who are supposed to love you unconditionally. So the next is, in high school I was suicidal because my disability makes me feel lonely. I put yes, but more so it was the abuse going on at home. Um, I feel like I definitely had a lot more friends than maybe the average disabled person. Like, I know a lot of autistic people and even if it's just depression, anxiety, whatever it is, a lot of people get left out and I feel like I just constantly always, um, like I was definitely the one making more of the effort, but I was included in a lot of different groups. I had a lot of different one-on-one -on -one relationships until we'd have fallouts like kids do. But because of how I was raised and maybe how they were raised, it's like we couldn't just, I don't know, a lot of my relationships, friendships make me feel very disposable where it's like, Oh, they see me one way, they see me as a nice, caring, giving person who's like tries to be funny and always crack a joke. But then if there's any, ever any like little bit of discomfort, it's like, oh, you're just removed from, from people's life. Like you're nothing. Like, I'm not, it's like, I don't know. Some people are allowed to have flaws and it's kind of even joked up. Like, um, it's kind of almost some like everyone has flaws and it's like some certain people are somehow entitled enough where it's like those flaws are part of their personality and it's okay but then there's people like me where it's like I'm not allowed to have flaws like I have to be the one way that people see me and if I'm anything else or if I'm having a bad day it's like unacceptable in people's eyes I don't know why it's like that but it's literally always been like that and I'm not even exaggerating but, um, yes, I was, I had suicidal ideations, but I had one attempt when I was very young. <sighs> you know, I always cry when I'm doing these, like, li or, you know, listening to other people's stories. And then when it comes time to me doing this, it could be partly because I'm looking at the most gorgeous scene ever. <laughs> but... I've, you know, definitely shed a lot of tears for myself in my life. I'm not saying I'm, like, emotionless now, but I, I'm somehow, I'm just a lot stronger now with not crying at my own past, like, pain. So, this next one is, I have a fear of dying young, and I put yes because statistically speaking I don't know what the statistic is exactly but um people who are autistic tend to have a shorter lifespan 
I'm sure autistic, fibromyalgia, ADHD, anxiety, depression, even eating disorders in the past, like the damage I've done to myself, all those can be contributing factors to like living a shorter life. So I think I do, but at the same time, um, I think I'm trying my best right now to take actions to reverse some of it if I can, because you know, like by not drinking, not smoking, not doing drugs, not participating in per promiscuous sex and like taking big risks. And I think on the other hand, like because of all the past experiences, like I'm living so much in a bubble these days of protecting myself that if any I might be increasing my lifespan because I'm not having the same experiences that normal people get like you know relationships can be very fulfilling rewarding not f being alone and they bring a lot of happiness and joy but then there's the abuse control factor which like can reduce your life so so yeah those are the questions um i know that a lot of the time when i do these videos they're not you know upbeat and fun and like very popular topics of conversation but they're important and you know life is the reason why these things are so controversial and comfortable is because we don't talk about it enough so that's why I'm sharing these videos to hopefully help other people not feel so alone and I know it does make a difference when you share your experience with others and you think you think like you're the only one in the world who feels like that or you just I'm just trying to share from my experience but also to say that like not to be corny but things do get better and things like like things really do get better and the more that we learn about um, how to help ourselves in terms of mental health and and physical and mental health um, like we can completely shift our minds and some of the thinking it just really does take a lot of hard work and it takes sort of like this radical acceptance self-acceptance it takes like sometimes like a little bit of delusion to get yourself into more of a positive mindset and it's not about unmask it's not about masking again and it's not about um being fake like you have to be true to yourself and you have to be realistic but it's about if you feel like you want to improve there's things you can do of course we all can so anyway um thanks so much for tuning into my video <laughs> and I should stop saying that <laughs> But I do appreciate it a lot, and if you could please like, comment, subscribe so that my videos reach a greater audience of people who can relate to this or maybe really need to hear it for whatever reason, something they're going on in, something that's going on in their personal life. Um, I appreciate that. So, yeah. Um, and I still have a lot of videos to come. Like I keep saying I want to do a video on my surgery. That I need to just... <laughs> I brought it up enough times, but I keep putting it off because it's extremely triggering, traumatic, and the details are pretty graphic and are going to be disturbing for a lot of people. So I've been putting that off, but... I want to talk about it soon because I think my surgery is a very common thing that a lot of people have and I just want other people to um, learn from my mistakes or learn, you know, what 
they can do to better help themselves if they get the same surgery. Alrighty, well thanks and have a good day.